Yeah, okay. Something still on for me, please. Can you pop over and get uh, Tony? Or uh, Sue, because it's handy. Mickey, can we have the pomegranates in? Yeah. Do we have the Polaroids of the pomegranates as opened on yes. in here? I was here. That's the end of you there, look. Just the oh, yes, there. I see. Right. So the knife has got to be on your side, and ideally the two halves fairly together. Or it doesn't have to be absolutely exact, but I'm as near as you can make it. The knife was that way. Let's go with this one. Do you want me to Do you cheer? mean there's all tumble down the end of yeah. the... Yeah. Be because from that angle we don't see that, it doesn't matter too much. It's just that I want to oh. try and approximate that. Jesus. Forget that bit. Yes. Can I shorten this for Janet so it isn't so... It's easy if I don't have that thing at the end. Yeah. The telling of the story, I was telling as if to a child and that's what you want. Mm -hmm. yeah. no. How are you going to use Hades on Pluto? Hades first time. Yeah? It seems to be looking that way, that one, and that way, the other. Yes, but that's because one is taken from the front and one is taken from right. the back, isn't it? That's the edge of that hand there as well. Okay. Right, okay. So here's not part. more of this leading corner, wasn't it? Marie, can we check that again, please? Is that right? And is the position of the shoe critical in the Polaroid as well? Yes, that's fine. And Mickey, again, the shoes have been creeping out. Can you push them back in again? Okay. So in other words, as she goes by and hits them, they're going to be wrong okay, for the, the, the match. Really? If they come out and they disappear, we can put them. Well, we can put them back in it, that position again afterwards. Fertile enough, Mrs. Tullum, to engender felicitous illusions, if not their own offspring. And of course, there are more. More of what, madam? Mr. Neville, we all know your delight in the visual conceit. The juice of the pomegranate may be taken for blood, and in particular the blood of the newborn and of murder. You came up there. Two problems. When Janet has the pomegranate up in front of her face, from that angle, we see well, the pomegranate is right in front of her face. Mm -hmm. So we're either going to have to drop, just drop it slightly, yeah. so we can see or it clearly, right. or move it to the right or to the left. Yeah. 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 We've got a cloth for Janet. Yeah. 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 You were washing with bated breath, weren't you? I was about to leap in, I know. <laughs> what I'd also like to do, Curtis, is... Sorry, we'll pick this up in close-up as well. Yeah. It's so dramatic, this bit here. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, right. we'll have to mm -hmm. make sure that works. Yeah. See, see the one? The drops. Yeah. But you didn't see it actually running on the wax. I couldn't really see where I'm standing. You know when you're facing that way and she's telling you the you story? Can. Yes. We have your back at the head over and over and over again. Can you somehow contrive to give us a bit more three-quarter view? I'll try, yeah. It's very sticky. Well, the centre of interest is essentially on her, but it would be nice to see something. Yeah, what would be a good moment to do that, do you think? Yeah, well, uh, Goddess of Fields of Gardens of Orchards is distraught, heartbroken. Then there's a pause, slight change of emphasis. She sulks. Maybe look there. She refuses. As she looks around the room briefly, 
Can you follow that? It's just to animate the head a bit, otherwise it's just static. All we see is just greasy black hair all the time. What are we going to do about that line as well, Janet, the double well? Have served us. Oh. Well. With that pause in, it makes a lot more rhythmic sense. Picking up a picture of you've seen. Yes, that's fine. Janet, first of all, can you tell me what attracted you to this particular film? Peter Greenaway, quite simply. I had received this enormous script. It was the biggest script I'd ever seen in my life. I mean, like, that thick. And I was asked to read it, and I couldn't actually... I was going to say I couldn't put it down. I could. I had to put it down. I couldn't pick it up. But I couldn't stop turning the pages. We had a very long casting session, and a lot of people saw the script. And I think that the reasons I would like to be, I hope I'm right in this, that uh, these uh, experienced actors took part were basically due to the enthusiasm that they felt for the script. His father is a tenant farmer. That means he comes from, obviously, a lower background than the people he, whose houses he draws. And because he's supposedly very good at his job, he's... Uh, become successful and very much in demand. Uh, when the events of this film take place, he's on his way to start a commission at uh, a stately home in another part of the country and is just stopping off for a night or something and is persuaded by the two ladies of the house to draw 12 pictures of their house, which he doesn't want to do because it's, he's got plenty of work and the house doesn't interest him very much. And as a joke, he names an outrageous price for doing each picture and that he and the right to have a sexual liaison with the lady of the house uh, each time he does a picture as a gag and of course she calls his bluff and says okay and he's too he can't really back down because he looks silly and that's how he becomes involved in this this is more or less the first time that I've worked with actors certainly this number of actors um, I was a little anxious about it, a little apprehensive, but I'm very pleased to say that I think the whole thing went down extremely well. The actors certainly helped me. Um, they put an awful lot of enthusiasm and interest into the parts, for which I'm very grateful, and I think it was really going to show in the final movie. Peter does talk in rather more painterly and intellectual terms to actors than probably they're used to. Yeah, I mean, I think he was... Not worried, but he was obviously slightly apprehensive about working with actors, but he's taken to it like a duck to water. He's terrific. And he knows what he wants and knows what he doesn't want. When the actors were first uh, auditioned, we as a production team were very keen to lay down the idea that we would cast and crew work in a totally ensemble situation, on location. And I was very keen that they should throw in their contributions as well, with all their craft, experience and knowledge. Um, we had very, very little rehearsal time, and that was relevant to me because I was very keen to make very long, sustained takes and wasn't going to make a very over-edited film with lots of reverses and cutaways. So that demanded um, strong uh, theatrical backgrounds from a lot of the people to be able to sustain the action over a long period. I first of all like the fact that uh, it's a very, very small crew, so, you, so, you, so everybody works very hard and very intensely. I liked very much also that we all get the same amount of money. Um, so people are much more prepared to do more things. I, I think being in the same boat is a very important factor in, in people's concentration and the kind of commitment they give to a film. Um, this is the first of, I think, four um, feature films that the BFI are now doing. And the the atmosphere is particularly personal on most movies you do everything's very departmentalized and nobody will pick up anybody else's bit of clobber you know they just won't do it for instance the makeup people don't feel that that's all they do they make suggestions about things the same way that the lighting people do costume people um and it works very well obviously you've got somebody at the helm Peter, who makes the decisions. But 
and it's just a good way of working. People give more because they feel part of the whole thing. I described the film more or less when I'd first read it as a sort of post-restoration whodunit, a kind of costumed Agatha Christie. And in a sense, it does have that sort of mystery about it. There are clues dropped, like handkerchiefs, throughout the film. And like a very good detective story writer, you either pick them up or you don't. It's up to you.